It's always enjoyable when when you win games. So it's it's massive today that we get um, a win again because the last game was not was not good enough. The the result I think uh, we create enough in the last game to, to to have a different result, but we also give away enough to don't have uh, the result we wanted. So today I think was a massive performance. The second half we improved better than the first half. We tried to 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 reduce the distance between the first half, second half with them. And uh, we didn't get a lot good chances, but uh, I think the second half was was better for us. And at the end, cool, cool score, one goal. Really happy with the points, but also with the performance. It was an impressive performance our sides against Villa. I didn't lose over ten games, I think. Um, score every game, and we were totally in control. We created a lot of chances. Uh, one 0 I think it could have been three one or four one. So our sides a really good and impressive performance. Well, Manchester United knew how they wanted to get at Villa today, didn't they? They did. It was it was quite a simple game plan. There was no need to play through the thirds. There was no need to uh, go for you know overplaying in possession because Aston Villa came with a really high aggressive line and Manchester United at times just needed one pass to to break those lines and and get in behind and. To be fair to, to Aston Villa, in the first 20 minutes or so, they played it really well. Manchester United couldn't quite figure out how to time their runs right initially. Marcus Rash was offside with the first one. Then the goalkeeper, sweeper-keeper, Emi Martinez, all afternoon long, was, was able to come out and, and Aston Villa defender. But then clever players will start to do something different. You just saw... Marcus Rashford dropping deeper, running from much deeper positions. That makes it more difficult for defenders to keep that high line. Didn't quite work out on this one, even though he timed his run better because Martinez was, was in the right position. Then they started to mix it up, Manchester United. Runners from deeper positions. Casemiro is the one that breaks the line, allows Sancho to get the ball. And they just started to show variation, Manchester United. Started to make Aston Villa run towards their own goal. And clever players will always eventually work out things like high lines. Bruno Fernandes on this occasion, but this is the one. Aston Villa, for only a few times in, in the game, the two centre-halves didn't quite get that line perfect. The goalkeeper wasn't in a position to come out and win the ball. Marcus Rashford was away. It was uh, an OK finish, hit it early. Bruno Fernandes following up brilliantly, but they were just too clever for, my, for Aston Villa, really, Manchester United. And then all the damage was done in the first half. Villa improved a bit in the second half, but not enough to come back. I mean, they've been walloped at, at times away from home of Manchester United, but at home, fewest goals conceded, yeah. which is some going, actually, <coughs> considering the, the troubles they have had defensively. Tough to play against, yeah. And when you consider the number of fixtures that, they, that they've had and to keep that up, it's impressive, yeah. And a mix and match defence as well. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine, this is going to sound a bit damning them with faint praise. And I don't mean that because they've won a trophy and they'll probably finish top four. So they're going the right way. Mm -hmm. They just get the job done at the moment, don't they? They're not going to quicken the pulse like Manchester City or Newcastle at the moment or Arsenal have done this season. But, you know, as f they are on track under Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, they are. And when you take into account where they were early on um, the last season and early on this season. And in August, yeah. Uh, you have to say they've done a wonderful job. It's not been exciting. It's not been fantastic. Mm. Or you, like, you, you don't get, you know, you're not sitting at the edge of your seat when you're watching them, but it's effective yeah. and it's getting the job done. But it's getting it done with the personnel that he's currently got. Yeah. So Eric Ten Hag is going to want to to clear out a lot of players, send a, a few out on loan and bring in his yeah. own players. And then we'll start seeing the type of football that he wants to play, which will be something similar to what Manchester City or uh, Liverpool or somebody, that type of team will play. At the moment, he's doing the best with what he's got. And like you said, it's effective. It's getting the job done. And I guess the Villa team will be in as good a form yeah. as anybody in the last few weeks. So I'm beating in 10 going into this one. Mm. Yeah, Villa had one or two chances. But, you know, the, the, the goal from Villa point of view is a, is a bad goal because it's not a great kick from Emi Martinez. He puts it on the Casemiro, then a great header. Then I think Emi Martinez doesn't shift his feet there. But I tell you, Bruno's having a good season. I think he's having a very good he's season. He is their outstanding player. Do you know, I think it's since Ten Hag's come in, I think under Ranić, I think he was trying Hollywood passes left, right and centre. I think Ten Hag's made him simplify his game a lot more. He still goes for them because he's got, he's got a range of passing. But, you know... He's Villa, also the star man now that Ronaldo's I was just going to say that. He's that, the man. He plays every biggest, game if he can. That's, that's one of the I, biggest I, differences. I still think he's got a way to go in terms of playing the position better. 
So I don't think he's a number eight. I think he's best off playing in the position that he's been playing lately, which is a number 10. Yeah. That's no bad thing. He's still got the skills. And if you free him up and you play a Casemiro or a Sibica or Ericsson or Fred behind him and you let him be a number 10, you can then you can sort of let him off if you like if he goes for a worldly pass and it doesn't come off and his pass completion is not high because of what he's doing in front of goal. Just one other quick point. They defend really well, don't they, Manchester United? Look how many games they won 1-0 this season with Varane and Martinez out injured now. Shaw's played in that. Obviously, Lindelof, you were saying off there. Yeah. Lindelof, you know, if you hear the number three centre-half, he's a very good one. He's a steady Eddie. He gets the job done. He's consistent. And I think, the, like you said, the reputation he's got is a little bit harsh because he's, he's made one or two mistakes, don't get me wrong. But he's not bad at all. He, you know, you, he's trustworthy. He's, he's reliable. Bad, he's took a bad rap, I think, yeah. over the last couple of years. Yeah. You know, I think it's been very easy to go if yeah. you can see Art Lindelof. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think he's had so many different partnerships. When he's played, he's, his form is pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes. Position Marguer. Alors, que se passe-t-il le buteur Hakim Ziyech est resté au sol. 